gang 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 it's mama Bree, and i am back with another video today uh, the topic of our discussion today is being a single mother so all you single mommies out there just come on on in the room come on in the room so we can talk leave your comments below because i know y'all gonna have some comments because i'm going all the way back to tell you how my life has been being a single parent. The choices I made, good, bad, or indifferent, we're gonna talk today, excuse me, about being a single mama. Anyway, before we get into this video, go like and subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, and give this video two thumbs up. Not one, just give us two thumbs up. All right, so on to the video. Now, we're going to go back to 1992. Um, that's when I made the decision to become a single mother. I was a married mom. Um, so both of my kids are by the same man. Um, I, um, I made the choice to leave because I was in, in a very unhealthy marriage. Um, didn't know much about being married. Um, or being a wife, I should say. Um, and just a little bit of uh, advice. If if you are married and you're going through anything in your marriage, always seek seek counsel from someone that's married or an or, or older mother in the church. Someone that can, can tell you good, good stuff, you know, because sometimes you gotta stand and sometimes you gotta stay. And you got to fight the battle. but And I'm not saying stay in an abusive relationship. Because I was in an abusive relationship. I'm not staying in an abusive relationship. You hit me. I'm done. I'm out. And I'm not even going to take you verbally abusing me to the, you know, that much either. But like I said, if you are married, um, seek um, counsel from people that uh, 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 can give you good advice. Um, not single people because a lot of single people will tell you go ahead and leave leave if I were you I'll leave So, you know, just that's just a little bit of advice. So anyway, we're going back to my story um, So I was in an unhealthy marriage um, I was very very unhappy. I had recently lost my mom um, So I was I was lonely. I was and I felt very alone um, and I, again, my marriage was unhealthy and I would pray every day that God would give me the strength to, um, leave and get out of this relationship because it was, it was, I was miserable. Um, and I knew that when I left that I would probably be on my own with everything. So every day that was my prayer that the Lord would give me strength to leave. Um, and one thing, one, um, one of the, um, factors that made me to decide make the decision to leave excuse me is i i figured i did not want my my daughter growing up accepting abuse and i didn't want my son growing up giving abuse so that was one of my reasons that was the deciding factor for me to get out i didn't want that abuse around my kids i didn't want my kids to feel like they were walking on eggshells so i made the decision to leave um so what i did I headed out and I went and got a restraining order because I knew when I left, it was going to be some 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 trouble. You know, you know he was going to come and and try to do something. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. So honestly, I thought I'll just go ahead and prepare to kill him in case he comes to bother me. So I'm gonna get my restraining order on him that says that you you cannot be 50. No. 50 you gotta you gotta excuse me be um you can't be 50 feet f oh, uh, by me so you you can't be nowhere in my vicinity so i've already made i've already had that plan in my head let me get this restraining order then i started taking gun lessons at the gun range and started going shooting guns and stuff and i purchased a nine millimeter because now mind you in my other video i told you all i lost my mother's and I lost my mother to gun violence. Someone killed my mom. So now in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not going to let this happen to me or my kids. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get ready. Got my restraining order. I didn't want him nowhere around me. And because I already knew in my mind that if I had to kill him, I wanted, some, I wanted to be protected. So that I would not spend the rest of my life in jail. 
So, anyway, end up leaving. Long story short, end up leaving. Got my own apartment. And at that time, I, was, I got an efficiency, and that was in Miami. And I was paying $364 a month. I was down the street from a bus stop, down the street from a laundromat, down the street from a, a grocery store. So I didn't have a car at that time. So I left where I knew I could take the bus to work. I could take a cab to the grocery store, the laundromat, because those are those are necessities. So I had planned all. I had all this all planned out, and I knew it was going to be hard. So I, I left, and yeah. It was hard. It was it was very hard. I worked double shifts. I did what I had to do because I knew this man was not going to help me. And so be it. To from that day to this day, he helped every now and then. But y'all single mothers out there know you cannot take care of no child every now and then. You can't be throwing them a, a bone every now and then. You can't send them twenty dollars, thirty dollars. $40, $100, maybe twice a year. No, baby. They have to be taken care of 24-7, 365, and all in between. So, I'm not taking it all from him, but he, he did ne he's never done like he's supposed to have done by these kids. So, me being a single parent, I was in college trying to do, you know, get, you know, just get wanted better for my kids, wanted better. I was going to school. And I, my goal was to be a pediatrician um, because that's something I've always wanted to, and dreamed of doing. Um, of course, that dream was ended um, and he, he, he was a big part of that, um, ending that dream. Because when you have kids, sometimes you got to put your dreams on hold because you got to take care of them. You are obligated to take care of your kids. And um, so that was, I put everything on hold. I didn't go out to clubs. I didn't um, go out with my friends. I left, I did, I, everything about my life I put on hold because I owe my kids to that much to raise them in a, a God-fearing home. And I raised them to fear, eat fear, be fearful of your mama as well because I didn't, I didn't play. I wasn't their friend. I didn't put up with no foolishness and, and I was there with them and I raised them and I talked to them and I, like I said, I was there for them. And I can tell you, it has been very, it was very hard. I had a lot of nights that I would cry myself to sleep trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to make ends meet. And you know, kids, while they're in school, they always needed something. Picture day. And my kids were 17 months apart. So as soon as Love finished doing something, DJ came right behind her immediately and he did the same stuff. So, you know, I never got a break. I never was able to just breathe or um, took care of just me. Excuse me. And it, like I said, it was hard. It was very hard. I was talking to my daughter earlier and I said this to her before. When I left their dad, he told me that I would be back to him when my face fell in the dirt. And you know what? He never seen no dirt on my face because I kept it moving. I don't care what the situation was, I kept it moving. I kept my head up. I was blessed and fortunate to get to land great jobs. Um, right now, I'm not a pediatrician, but I'm a, a practice administrator for a pediatric office. And God has blessed me with good positions, good paying jobs. And my kids never wanted for anything at all. They've always had a great life. And you know, today, sometimes, not only today, but sometimes I look at my refrigerator and my cabinets and I, you know, today I had an emotional moment when I was telling my daughter, ever since I left that family, you know, my in-laws, I, I, I never begged no bread from nobody. Me and my kids always had, and I mean, just everything. Lights never went off, water never went off. We never got an eviction notice on our door. And when I tell you I experienced all that being married, I mean, when I tell you that situation was the worst, but when I tell you God showed up and showed out in my life, when I look back over the years that I, I, I cried and, and wondered, Lord, how I'm gonna make it. But I look around and I see, and look over my life and I see, honey, it's no, it was nobody but God that brought me through 
the tough times in my life and I'm so thankful for my children respectful they love their mom they're very respectful of their mom I can tell y'all I've never had a day not a day of problems with either one of my children I mean in school nothing I can't complain about anything at all so I'm blessed and I'm thankful and to all the other single moms that's out there I'm gonna give you this advice you already know when you make a choice to lay down with a man that's your choice and sometimes we as mothers we want to turn our kids against the father that's where you're wrong that's wrong you chose to lay with that man just like I chose to lay with my kids father I never kept them from him when I sent my kids with him they had everything they needed all he had to do was house them they had money for food in their pocket my kids I, 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 I sent them prepared but some of us single mothers we be so in our emotions and so caught up in all this you're hurting your child because at the end of the day I felt like this when love and DJ Prissy P that's who y'all know her by I call her love um, that's her name that's what I named her but Prissy P and DJ I always knew that when they became adults they would figure out things for themselves because I didn't raise them to be a fool so you don't have to keep your kids from their dad because after all like we said you lay down with that man that's your choice just because you have your differences with him that's their daddy they don't care about that as long as they're not in an, in an abusive environment or environment that they're not safe in I'm not saying that but stop keeping these kids from their dads as a single mother and you know what it don't run after him if he not taking care of that child you are obligated because that that child came from your womb you are, are obligated to take care of that child so focus your energy on being the best single mother you can be and that mean train them Spend time with them at the table doing their homework. Talk to them. Lay in their bed with them. Go check around their room. Look under their bed. Look in their purses. Look in their drawers. Get to know your child. Get up. Don't don't be on the phone with your girlfriend trying to scheme and see how you can where you can find him at and where you can show up on him at. Y'all done. Get over your emotions and focus on raising your children because they need you. Keep them in church. Keep them at Sunday school. Put the word of God in them at an early age so that the world could be a better place. Because a lot of our kids, they're growing up and they're doing anything they, they think they want to do. Because I always believe a man without God will do anything. So focus on raising your children. Focus on teaching them respect for their elders. Focus on teaching them respect for your neighbors. That's what you focus on teaching them respect for their teachers and how to act in school. Don't be running after these fathers. They know they got a child. Take care of your children. That's what I did. I didn't run after him. Let me tell you something else before I go. When I did go to court with their dad, I told the mediator, I'll take 50 cents a week. And they looked at me and they said, Miss Brinson, 50 cents a week? We've never had no one just ask for 50 cents a week. Because every time they'll ask him, could you pay $40 a week? He, he disputed that. It got all the way down to like $20 a week. And I said, you know what? Just tell them to give me 50 cents a week. And then the, the judge said to me, I've never, out of the 30 years that they, had, they were a judge, that she had never had a, a mom to ask for 50 cents a week. But I knew what I was doing. Because see, I knew that when those kids grew up, they was going to figure the shit out. Excuse my French. But they was going to figure it out. My plan was to give DJ a quarter and give love a quarter. This y'all child support right here. Because you know what? I already made up my mind I'm going to take care of my kids to the best of my ability as a single mother. But go ahead and give me that quarter because that quarter is going to tell a story. Because one day they're going to look around and say, that mommy, that's all my daddy gave? Yes, that's all he gave. Because he was back and forth all over the place. 
But I'm like, I'm not keep going to court. I'm not gonna keep go running down to get no child support. No. And at the end of the day, I did get child support. I got $96 a month. $96 a month. That's what I got. $96 a month. And then he went around bragging about he paid me $20,000 in child support. Whoa, whoop de doo. Y'all, <laughs> I broke that down. Okay, that was like $40 every two weeks. $22 every week per child. Now y'all tell me something. Y'all do the math. Y'all can do the math. Do it. Do it. Please do the math. $96 a month for two children. And y'all see my kids. My kids ain't those little tiny kids. So I had to buy certain clothes for Prissy P. I couldn't shop at Walmart for Prissy P. I had to shop at catalogs. I had to buy her mate, name brand stuff. You know why? Because of her size. So DJ the same way. They ain't, I couldn't run to Walmart or Target or Target. I had to shop, you know, in other places. And their, their clothes cost money. And y'all know when they get older, they lunch money. Could never qualify for free lunch. I tried, but I couldn't. So I, I may do. I had to give them lunch money. But he always brag about how much he paid. 20000 in child support over 18 years. Baby, do your math. Do your math. And it wasn't even 18 years. But do your math. Do your math. That ain't nothing. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even mention that. But you know what? I, even with that, I used to give my kids them, that $96 check. That was for their little gas. Because by that time, they were driving or they was leaving school for lunch. I, I div divvy that $96 up to them. Could that be their lunch money? That ain't buy no clothes or nothing like that. But I still kept my head up. I still kept my head up, you know? And it's really sad to see that your kid's father would be quick to take care of another woman's children. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you, let me tell you, you, that is something right there. I mean, take care of them. I mean, whoa. But I'm always like this. I ain't laying with no man. Like I said, I'm not laying next to no man that do not take care of his kids and just think it's okay. No, I'm going to be asking questions where they at, what they need. Because you know what? It makes kids feel bad to know that you laying up you did that with this woman, with her children. And you ain't doing nothing for them, for them? No, ma'am. No, that would that that would never fly with me. No, I don't play that. Period. Period. Point blank. I don't care. I'm gonna be asking questions. I'm gonna be knowing. I'm I'm gonna know. And to me, I feel like, excuse me, you a woman, so you already know. And then it be them women too that uh, that has experience in their relationship, meaning their kids, daddy ain't shit. And then they get with a man that ain't shit with his kids. And the cycle continues. And some play, and sometimes we gotta break that cycle. Make people, make them man and man up to his responsibilities. Let them man up and take care of their kids. Yeah, th that's a requirement because they lay down and get those kids as well. But you got some women that don't care about that or they figure they ain't in any business. But let me tell you something, it's coming back on you. We are all women, regardless. We are mothers, grandmothers, aunts. We are, we are sisters, cousins. And let me tell you something, when we, when we degrade another woman or look down on another woman, we're doing it to ourselves. We're doing it to ourselves. You know, as a, excuse me, especially as a single mother, you know how we, we, we can relate on so many levels how, how, excuse me, how hard it is. We can relate on all levels. And you know what? We do what we have to do to make sure food is on the table, make sure them bills are paid. And it may be some things that we didn't want to do, but we had to do because our babies got to eat. It's, it's a difference. And while they're just, these men, they just roaming around the world, looking good, claiming, oh, my, I had a baby daddy that, that would, would, would brag, you know, that his, his child support is doing so much for his kids in North Carolina. Boo, let me tell you something. Your child support just bought them lunch. Your child support ain't paid a damn bill. Your child support ain't did nothing, not, they ain't buy no clothes, no shoes, ain't pay for no college tuition, nothing, baby. You know who did that? My sweat and tears. Working double shifts, 16 hours a day. Working sometimes so I just couldn't even 
excuse me, couldn't even think clearly to drive home because I would be so sleepy and tired. But as soon as overtime, there was overtime offered, hey, I'll do it because I need them extra dollars. Then, y'all single mothers know this too. When you do that overtime, Uncle Sam take out so much of it, you be like, damn, was it even worth me doing a damn overtime? Because, I mean, you might see a couple of extra dollars, but damn, not like you done add up stuff, you know, you done add up what you gonna buy. Now you can put some new, new curtains up to your window or buy a new rug for your living room and Uncle Sam you know, took all that so it's kind of like you still between a rock and a hard place I never got excuse me I got food stamps for three months and I went down there when I got a job I cut them off because I was a kind of a scary square type person and you know people would be like you can you should have got them stamps for you no know, no three months because there were there were to assist me I I'm not getting ready to live on a system because it's just not enough money that was just an assistance and I got it for three months and I went down there and cut it off myself so I wasn't that excuse me I wasn't that type okay I'm gonna lay on section A or get food stamps and oh uh, no 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 I believe in hard work working hard for my um for what I need what I want and to take care of my kids and I did it and let me tell y'all single mothers that a woman was something a woman told me they're not gonna always be little so do put all the best you can into them while they're little so when they grow up you can reap your harvest because a lot of parents I hear even I have parents asking me all the time what did you do to make love and DJ turn out the way they turn out what did you do and let me tell you something you got to plant that seed when they're little you can't plant that seed if you if you if you don't plant the seed you can't expect no harvest so you can't put none in them and then expect when they get grown that to, for them to be respectful and all this that and that third if they gonna curse your neighbor out if they curse the teacher out they'll come back home and curse you out and you know why they cursing the teachers out or your neighbors out is because they could curse you out because they don't respect you let me tell you something my kids don't do stuff like that even though my kids are grown even now they'll walk away before they just disrespect an adult that's how I raised them but if you don't put nothing in don't expect nothing out of it so you as single parents it is very doable and baby it ain't easy but let me tell you something it's gonna take some work and I'm talking to you all out there. It's going to take some work. And I don't mean laying up with this and that man. trying to. I, don't mean, I mean home. Being with them. Setting an example for them. My kids saw me go to work. And come home. We took family trips. We, we did things as a family. But I went to work. And I came home. I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't with this man. That man. They only see me with three men in their whole lives three lives three men and Charles I'm still with him it was one guy in between their dad and their dad my kids I don't I don't play that I'm not running around and I don't need no no man um, at my door every day I didn't play that and another thing another reason why I play a lot of people around my kids because I had to protect them you, there's a lot of people crazy out here be molesting your children y'all parents know that y'all these men y'all let them right in your house even women whoever you let them in your house so freely you know because you're thinking just about yourself when you have kids you got to think about your kids period they are first when they're little when they're little they're first I didn't play that by my kids I didn't play nobody just stand at my house uh, around my kids no, no, you don't take my kids no bath. You don't have to do nothing for my children. I did those things. So, that's another, excuse me, and that's another, that is another topic. That's another story right there um, um, that we need to discuss regarding how some parents do those type of things um, and not really watching their kids and allow any and everybody around their kids. I never played that. So, you know, I didn't play nobody babysitting them. I didn't go out in the clubs. So I stayed home with them. And you know what we did? We got movies and we pop popcorn. And we that was our movie night. And sometimes I couldn't afford to go out of town. We lived in Florida. I'll go get a room on the beach. They were little. They ain't know no difference. And and we and um, they were able to get in the pool and stuff. And Love and DJ thought we was out of town. 
Honey, we weren't out in no town, honey. We was on South Beach, straight. <laughs> they ain't know no difference. They thought we was out of town. Oh, mama, we out of town. Yes, we out of town. We stayed, to the, we stayed in the hotel from like maybe Thursday night to like Monday. My kids thought they was out of town. We took pictures. They was in the water. We went to nice restaurants. But you know what? That's all I could afford. So I didn't let them miss out on anything because they don't really know. Just like with Christmas, they don't really know. It's us. They don't care about that stuff. Because as soon as they open them toys and play with them toys for a few minutes, they done with them. So my kids were the same way. They ain't know, they ain't know no difference us riding from my house in Miami to Miami Beach, South Beach, and get, and get in a hotel, and we was up in a condo, and we had a nice view of the beach. My kids thought they was out of town. And I did that for a long time, y'all, till they got real, real big. And you know, when they got real big, they were like, Ma, we on South Beach. <laughs> But you know what? It was all good though. But they had good childhood memories though, you know. So I did what I had to do as a single parent. Even yeah, another thing I we would do, we would take, we would go to the park, have little picnics. My kids thought that was wonderful. Bring your little toys out there, their balloons, their little water guns. I made fun for them as a single parent. And like I said, people ain't even know we didn't have. People didn't know. I, I tell my kids that we might have a Coca-Cola pop pocketbook but when we walk out the streets we gonna look like we drinking champagne baby and we had a coca-cola pocketbook okay but that's how i was raised and that's how i raised my kids so all you single mothers out there we all in this together and you know another single person you know lift them up encourage them you know what i'm saying encourage them excuse me tell them they could do it and all you have to do is just keep on pushing keep on pushing pray and keep on pushing and always remember they're not gonna be little forever they're gonna grow up one day and they're gonna be grown and mama you're gonna be done with your work well as a mom you really never done but I'm just saying when they're little when you are just so obligated because when they get grown it's time for us to release them okay sometimes as parents we want to hold them and carry them no it's time for them to carry themselves. So it ain't like I say, in time moving so fast now that honey, it, it's in no time. Like I tell my kids, we go out now. I don't take my pocketbook. Mm -mm, honey, I leave my pocketbook home or in the car because DJ or Prissy P is treating. I love for them to treat me. I love, honey. Let me tell you something. They get my grass cut. Yes, they pay for all they pay for my grass get cut. I just was asking them could they start paying my mortgage so I could just have a complete break. But my kid is good to me, and you know what? I relax in it. They're good to me. They pay things, and I, I'm enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy it. If I need a new purse, I tell my kids. They make it happen for me. I don't have to worry about none of that. But it's what you put in it. You got to put it in it. I raised them to take care of me, boo. I raised them. I work for this. So I am relishing in it and I am enjoying it because I work for this. I put in for this. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it all is possible with the Lord Jesus. And I am Mama Bree. And as always, I have enjoyed talking to you all. And y'all want to comment? I know y'all going to comment on this video, but you know, go ahead and comment and let's chat. And I love you all as always. And may God bless you, all you single mothers. I love you. I love you. Keep doing what you do. And let me tell you, they're not going to be little for all, forever. Keep doing what you do and keep being great. I love you. Bye bye.